Hello everyone, welcome back to another lesson with Rivera Fine Art Studios. Today I want to talk about drawing the mouth and how the mouth relates to the underlying structure of the jawbone, which is the mandible, and the maxilla, uh, as well as the teeth. Okay, so one of the first things I'd like to do is just take a look at the skull. Now this is a replica of a human skull uh, cast from a real skull. And I ordered this from a company all online called Skulls Unlimited. What's nice about this is this bottom bone is removable. So uh, I've talked about the bones in previous videos, but we can really divide the skull up into two sections. Uh, so we have this top portion of the cranium and the area in here, which makes up the features, which is called the maxilla. And then we have this bottom piece, which is the mandible which is really a, a pretty small bone. Um, now what we notice when we turn it this way is that there is a very sharp turning through the teeth. Uh, when we compare that to other parts of the skull, such as the upper portion of the cranium, so if I turn it this way, um, we can see through here, through the brow ridge and the eye sockets, that has a very much more gradual turning. It almost flattens out uh, and then when I turn it this way, again, this top row of teeth becomes a very sharp turn once again. So what that tells us is that everything tapers down towards the jawline. And that makes up the basic oval shape of the head. Okay, and then the other thing that we see when we look at the skull from the profile, uh, if we look at the top row of teeth and the bottom row of teeth, the top row stick out, um, they come out at an angle, and then the bottom teeth angle back in. So that creates a turning from top to bottom. So not only do we have a turning from side to side, when we look at it this way, we have that very tight turn through there, but we also have the turn from top to bottom. So uh, a lot of very round forms in the jawline. Uh, the other thing about the jaw is when we look at the mandible, that controls chewing and that's um, uh, a lot of movements with the mouth. That's pretty much the only movable bone on the skull. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is apply some of this um, knowledge of the underlying structure of the skull to a drawing. And I'm going to compare it to this drawing that I have been working on for a while now. This is a sight size drawing of a model that uh, I have done in pencil. And I want to use this example because the forms around her mouth are uh, rather pronounced. So we can really see uh, not so much the bone structure, some of the bone structure, but uh, also some of the muscles. So the first thing I want to do is just set up a, a foundation here. So if I first thing I want to do is look at the center line, the plumb line that moves through the center of her face. So that's the line that we see through the center of the nose and also through the center of the mouth. Okay, now when we look at corner to corner, if we're looking at the mouth here, um, we'll notice that in the corners there's these deep depressions. You can't really see it on this side because that's all in shadow. But right here, there's a deep depression and that is because there's actually a little muscle right in the corner of the mouth. So the first thing I wanna do even before I put that in is just establish the line uh, so this is the line of the mouth. This is where the, um, the upper row of teeth and the lower row of teeth separate. And again, it turns very sharply through here. And then we have these little oval-shaped lumps right here, which are called the nodes. So you have one on this side, and then one sits back here. And they actually sit at a little bit of an angle, like that. Okay, now um, on top of all of this sits a big circular shaped muscle called the orbicularis oris. So it sits over everything here. Now, uh, there's also a bunch of little muscles that branch off of the nodes that control a lot of movements in the mouth. Uh, smiling, frowning, 
Lots of muscles branch off of this, which I will talk about in my online portrait painting masterclass in much more depth. So I'm actually offering a painting masterclass as well as a drawing masterclass. Uh, but it's a lot of information, too much to get into here. So the next thing I want to do is now just talk about the planes of the lips. Um, so a lot of times I see beginners make the mistake of outlining everything, um, putting the lips into these bold outlines, which flattens them out. You really lose um, a sense of the fact that the lips are planes. So if we're looking at the upper lip, it's creating a shape like this. Angles up. Um, you know, if I simplify that into one big geometric shape, it's something like that. And then I have this little dip right in here. So there's two peaks that happen right here. And then there's actually a little depression right above that. So there's this little shape in here called the philtrum. Okay, and when we're looking at the lower lip, once again, we can think of that as a plane. So in this drawing here, there's a very dramatic uh, light and shadow, and there's really a pattern happening of light against dark. So the upper lip is a downward plane, so that's all falling into shadow. The lower lip is then angling back out, so it's, it's um, receiving some light, it's picking up some light. What happens right under the lower lip then is a downward plane, again, which angles back away from the light, so it falls into shadow. So there's really this pattern of light and dark. And if we're thinking about the center line moving through the forms of the lip, uh, we can indicate those plane changes. So right when I come to the upper lip, angles in like that. Come to the center crease of the mouth, angles back out that way when it hits the lower lip and then it angles back in again below the lower lip. Something else that we often see, um, because the lips are a slightly different color, a little pinker or more red, um, we see a slight value difference um, right in here. So if we're looking at the lower lip in comparison to the flesh, the uh, value of the flesh, there's a difference because the lips are in fact a slightly different color. Um, but still, when we look at the values, the lower lip is nothing, nowhere near as dark as the upper lip. So I'm just going to throw a little bit of shading into here um, to make those plane separations a little more obvious. Something like that. And then um, I'm going to go back and really start to examine the center line of the mouth. Okay, so one thing I just can't stress enough is the importance of not putting bold lines into the drawing. So let me just zoom in a little bit as I go into a little more detail here. Um, now, if I'm looking at <clears throat> the lips, a lot of times what people will do now is have the tendency to outline this to make it stand out a little bit more. You want to be very careful not to do that. What I could do is add a little bit of darker shading right along the edge. Just like that. And then typically that will become just a tad darker, right where that plane change occurs. And then I might get a little bit of reflective light right in here. In the case of the way that um, Rebecca's face is being lit, Rebecca is my model, by the way, uh, I am getting a lot of shadow right on the turning of the plane where it meets the center of the mouth. Okay, so what I've done is I've just um, done just a couple little details off camera just to save some time. But, um, you know, one thing we can start to look at now is this center line. So here is really where a lot of the shadow, the darkest shadow on the lips occurs. Um, so remember, this is all... A, this is actually a line that is created by a shadow. So I say, try to always avoid, avoid lines. Um, if I am to emphasize that line, I'm also going to add a little bit of shading. So I'll just thicken that band and let it sort of transition 
back into the darker part of the lips, just like this. So that way I can get away with drawing in a bold line. Now it also gets really dark right here. There's a depression right there, right in the corner, and then again in this corner. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and shade this a little bit and then come back and talk about it. Okay, so I've just gone ahead and I've darkened this um, center crease a little bit more and I've transitioned that back into the upper lip. Um, and there's really a lot of value changes in here. You know, uh, they're subtle, but there's really a lot going on. So once again, right along the edge here, uh, we can almost think of that as the core shadow, get a little bit of reflected light. There's actually a form right in here that dips down, creates sort of a U shape. Uh, so it typically gets a little bit lighter right there. And then as it starts to angle back um, into the corners of the mouth, it falls into slightly darker shadow. So indicating all of that with value changes really helps to establish uh, some of those subtle forms that you see in the lips. Okay, now when we're looking at the lower lips, there's actually two large forms these sort of protrude out a little bit. There's these bumps that do something like this. And they meet right in the center. A lot of times you will see a dark center line. Um, you get some creases in here. And that, that center one will be fairly pronounced. And then the other thing that can happen is the lips can be very moist. And that's something that can be indicated with shading. So simply by throwing in a couple of highlights, I can indicate moisture. And that's something that um, this drawing indicates over here, drawing of Rebecca. You can see it uh, taken to a little bit of a finer finish. Okay, so once again, I hope that all of this gives you some idea of how I go about drawing lips. This information will be available in my online drawing and painting masterclass. And to get to that, simply uh, check the link below or go to www.riverafinearts.com and check under my art classes category. Uh, in the meantime, happy drawing and painting. Bye for now.